Hey guys, what is up? It's the Gasty Gengar here today to show you the ins and outs of Destiny Swords of the Lost. Today I'll be showing you how to get a secret shader, how to be getting a secret sparrow, along with some other quests and stuff that you may not know that you haven't been able to do. So let's get right into this. Every Festival of the Lost starts off with doing a series of quests, starting off with this little lady right here. She's going to ask you to go trick-or-treating around the tower to grab candy and yeah. And after this is the other main quest that was added in this year, which was to go to the Iron Forge or the new social space this year and talk to the Cryptarch. Alright, so once you choose and spawn into any of the social spaces available, you will notice that they all now have a spooky Halloween aesthetic just for this event, and I personally love it. And you can feel their light. Alright, so let's just get the elephant out of the room. We already know this. The Treasures of the Lost is kind of required to get all the masks in the game, which really sucks. Um, the most I got out of these was the second, the Hoodoom accessory for the Bad Juju, which I will show you later. Um, the Firewolf mask, which is like the year two version of the blue skeleton mask, is only available through this box, which really sucks. Um, I was really looking forward to getting the S35 Jealousy, which in fa uh, was actually going to be the Sparrow I wanted to use for SRL in the uh, uh, Winter Update. We have the Devil Ghost, which looks fucking adorable, but it was not meant for me to have. And the Ghost Ghost, which was also not meant for me to have. Um, these two look adorable, and I would have loved to take these into raids. The Chromatic Jackalite is a Jackalite that changes colors on top of your head. The Sleepless Gaze is a giant eyeball. Bad Dream is like a taken jellyfish. Stroke of Midnight is a giant pumpkin that will smash open when you spawn, along with the Crawls and Creeps is a giant spider, and the Whim of Raoul is Ingrams. Alright, and this is a really cool touch, but if you noticed in the last clip, there was a robot in the background speaking about a very lost broom. Um, if you didn't notice, there's a bunch of robots around the tower that look like this, but the one sitting next to the Eververse Trading Center was not. In fact, she was complaining that she was missing her broom and her life was meaningless without it. So, once you go to the hangar, go down to this little nightclub area, and on the right wall on top of these boxes is a broom. But it's not just any broom, it is a special sparrow that is a flying broomstick. Alright, as you can see, we are now in the Plaguelands, and we are going to look at this lost room. It is not that much of a looker, but is a very cool sparrow, for nevertheless. So, let's hop onto this baby and give it a test drive. As you can see, it has three uh, trails coming out of the tail, and actually looks pretty cool. And, I'm not going to lie, this is probably better than the S35 Jealousy, but, again, I'm still kind of jealous that I wasn't able to get it. So next I'm going to show you the accessories that I got for my bad juju. One thing to make note of is right now these skins are only available through the Treasures of the Lost but will be made available to the normal boxes we get every time you complete a weekly strike. And I will admit that the Hoodoom is actually pretty good. Uh, it, I didn't want it at first, at first I wanted the, the first one, the Skull of the Amankara thing. But this is actually pretty great in its own, it actually looks pretty nice and I love it. Alright, so something you're going to notice right after the bat, I've been wearing this really cool emblem called the Resurrectionist, and sadly, Bungie's been doing this a lot this year, and I'm not really happy with it, and it's a lot of just pay-to-win kind of stuff, but as you know, it's not required. The Resurrectionist is only available to people who buy something from Destiny's Festival of the Lost collection on the Bungie store. All the money will be going to charity, but the options are kind of BS. You have a $40 pin set, a $10 PDF file, or if you want to pay $26 for the actual mask set, it's kind of stupid. And the rest of the stuff is sold out, so... Luckily, I got this from a nice person who's doing a giveaway on Twitter. Alright, so you've been collecting candy throughout this whole thing in these satchels, and you can actually trade them into this lady, and she will give you a speaker mask, a cryptarch mask, or a crota mask for one full bag. Or you can get a gift of the lost, which will give you a jackalite, along with a flight of shadows, and a shader called the Sea of Tears, which isn't too bad. So, let's take a look at all the masks. First off, we have the Firewolf mask. The Firewolf mask is only available through the... Treasures of the Lost, which I really hate how all of these completely aesthetic things are being treated like pay-to-win with the fucking 
Treasures of the Lost. It's really annoying. Then we have the Atheon Mask, where last year there was actually a quest where you wear the Atheon Mask and jump off a cliff to make fun of the glitch that was found in the Vault of Glass raid. And next off, we have the Speaker Mask, something that everyone wished was an actual helmet, but I guess this is close enough, you know? Um, it's really cool, and I don't mind actually having a helmet or actually being able to maybe give these some light, just have no buffs. The Crypt Dark Mask, eh, you can always have that smug look on his face. It's not really one of the more fun masks to wear. It's kind of boring, to be honest. Next is the Zer Mask. The Zer Mask is pretty cool since who doesn't want to have ramen noodles or look like Cthulhu? Um, Zer is a very interesting character and is honestly one of my favorites, and I am glad that they brought all these masks back to be available this year. And then we have the Traveler Mask, which you will be able to pick up through just completing the normal quests from the Festival of the Lost, which I will be probably streaming later today. Um, and then on top of that, we have the Kuroda Mask. Now, it's fun taking this thing into the King's Fall raid and killing orcs with it, because basically, orcs just got killed by his son. That's how I always thought of it. Next, we have the Tiger Mask, which is actually the reason why I wasn't able to complete the quest last year, which I'm glad I have a chance to do it again. And I really just resent this mask since then. Then we have the Ingram Masks. We have the Uncommon legendary and exotic along with the rare ones you know whatever we're just gonna skip over those and next up we have the oryx mask the oryx mask is of course a mask of oryx what else would it be um it's kind of fun to run around and just do regular activities with this i actually had fun running the actual king Swall raid with this on then we have the petra Venger mask which i'm pretty sure is the queen from house of wolves who died trying to save us from the dreadnought May she rest in peace and be forever remembered in Festival of the Lost. Then we have the exotic Ingram mask, which I was going to include this, but I thought, hey, it's an exotic Ingram. Who doesn't like to see exotic Ingrams? Uh, it's definitely one of the more unique masks and definitely one of the best ones to wear. Then we have the Skullless mask, which actually for some reason reminds me of a baboon or a mandrill. Um, I really enjoy this, and it's kind of fun to just kind of run around with Welcome this on, along with the Eris Morn mask, which, eh, it's Eris Morn. I feel like they could have captured her face better, maybe completed the back of the uh, helmet with, like, a little hood, but it's definitely great. And then we have the Warden's mask. The Warden's mask is definitely one of the better uh, masks from this year, and you could definitely wear it to Prison of Elders to make fun of him while you do it along with the Siva Mask, because who doesn't want to be some kind of weird triangle head Cthulhu? Or maybe Dr. Zoidberg? I don't know. To me, it just looks like a cube's trying to eat some uh, ramen noodles. Whatever, we'll, we'll leave it as noodles. Then we have the Revenant Mask, which is sadly one of the Iron Lords who has died. Um, I find this mask kind of tasteless, but at the same time, it's one of the best designed ones we have here today. Um, after that, we have the Axis Mask. The Axis Mask is, of course, the final boss of the Wrath of the Machine raid. Um, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I still need to do the raid myself, but it's definitely better designed. Then we have the Saladin Mask that you will get from starting the quests in the uh, Iron Temple, which I didn't record, sadly. Um, and next up, we have the Lost Prince Mask, which I'm pretty sure this is the Queen's brother who crash landed on Mars or something. Um, maybe, since this is a year two mask, maybe it is hinting towards something that will happen in the future. Who knows? Then we have the wolf mask, which is just the regular wolf mask. Um, I didn't even get this one, sadly, which kind of makes me upset. But next up is the final mask of the day, and that is the ghost mask, which... Well, it's, it's just a ghost. It's definitely, again, one of the better design masks, but I wish the thing in the middle would actually move around a little bit. You know, give something a little flair. Next up, we're going to take a look at the available shaders for this event. There are actually four instead of the three shown here. First off, we have Candlelight. Candlelight is a hot pink glowing shader, which I am looking forward to getting and is only available through strikes. Uh, the Unquiet Spirit is a lime green or toxic green shader that is only available through Crucible matches. And last but not least, the Sea of Tears is available through just giving the lady a bag of candy. 
So if you were like me last year, I actually saved the raisins, and th this year they automatically turned into Ascendant Raisins. If you picked them up, you would have gotten a Grimoire card for it. If you didn't, well, you're going to have to go to the Speaker and spend 25 months of lights and a box of raisin to get them. First, you're going to want to go to Zvala, the Titan Vanguard, and trade in your Ascendant sweet, uh, uh, Raisins for the Salted Sweets. Take the Salted Sweets to Raul the Vanguard, and then trade them in for the Winged Chews. Then once you get the Winged Chews, you're going to want to hand it to Amanda Holiday. And Amanda Holiday will have Spice Drops. Now you're going to want to breath these Spice Drops and take them to Cade's. And now that we've reached the second and final step, you're going to want to go to Cade, give him the Spice Chews, and he will give you the Un Chocolate. Now, I'm guessing, I'm guessing you already know where Get this is going to go, there. but since the unchocolate is definitely not chocolate and it is healthy, there's only one person to give it to in the tower, and that's the same person that gave you a box of raisins, and that is Eris Morn. Now, once you've given the box the unchocolate to her for a bag of treats, this is the final step, and now you will go into your inventory and open the bag of treats, and it will be the super black shader and a piece of celery. Now that we have the shader, let's take a look at it. Again, since I'm wearing the iron armor, it's not going to look that black, but it is actually a super black shader, and I hope you guys enjoyed this little quest. And last but not least are the emotes. First off, we have Terrify, which I'm guessing is an Exorcist reference because of the head spinning around. I really love it. Um, and the next one is the Howl, which is just a werewolf howl. Um, all the rest of the emotes are a repeat from last year, and probably will make a return next year, so don't worry about that. And this brings an end to the Festival of the Lost video. Um, this is so far everything that we know about Festival of the Lost and what we can get and how we can get it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hit that like button to show your support. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos just like this from the future. Or maybe catch a stream later of me just trying to do trials or something with the Festival of the Lost masks. I don't know. And comment down below what your favorite part of Festival of the Lost is. So. Until next time, I hope you all have a great, wonderful day and a great rest of the Festival of the Lost. And until next time, stay safe, Guardians.